Hi, it's Lindley Oz, and please help support my ministry by visiting my sponsors at GetTheTea.com. Check out all of Ronnie's health products and order some today. Find the ones that work for you or that might be something that helps a problem you're having or whether it's for daily maintenance. Check out GetTheTea.com and make sure that you mention that you heard about Ronnie and GetTheTea.com from Lynn Liaz. Your support is greatly appreciated. And you know, whether you're trying to just do regular maintenance on your health or you're battling illness, you can never go wrong by taking care of your body. God gave us this one body to have here on this earth while we're here. And we also know that great things are getting ready to happen. And there is just a lot of stress. As soon as we move forward in one area, there seems to always be something else waiting for us that takes up our time, our mind, and everything. So as you trust in the Lord to fight your battles for you, take care of the body that God gave you. Visit GetTheTea.com today. Check out Ronnie's products. And again, make sure you mention that you heard about his products from Lynn Hi, Liaz. this is Lynn Liaz, and I have David Hevener with me today. Hi, David. Hey, Lynn. How are you out there in Liaz land? I'm doing good, and I'm glad you pulled over to talk to me because I certainly wouldn't want you driving while we're trying to record a video, especially it looks like it's pretty stormy out there where you're at. It is. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're the, yeah. We're the second uh, city to get hit in this uh, great judgment of, uh, which we're going to talk about, Lynn. We're going to talk about. Where are you at right now? What city are you right in? Right now I'm in, uh, well, do I want to give it away in the city that's going to be judged soon? Do I want to give it away now or a little bit later on the show? So, oh, tell us later. Tell us later for sure. Okay. And well, then I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Yeah. In fact, you mentioned uh, God's judgment and things like that. And the big news right now is what's going on down in Texas. Right. And right. it's crazy what's going on. And there's actually two people I know of that had prophetic dreams. One had a prophetic dream in 2009, and I'll share a little bit on that later if we have time. And okay. the other one posted something about it on Z3 News back in 2006 about a coming storm of some sort that would be very destructive to Houston, Texas. And here it is happening. And the, yeah. the one gentleman that made a post commented that God told him, and this was the one back in 09, that when you see this, it has begun. Mm. So a lot of uh, a lot of serious things going on right now. What's your take, David? Well, I, I 100% agree that this is God's judgment, except, Lynn, it has not begun. It is already in motion. This is not the beginning of it. This is just a continuation of it. You know, when I drive into cities, and I think God's judgment is based upon, uh, it, it, it's, it's not confined to cities, but we can talk about cities and the sin of the city, okay? And I think that this is God's judgment upon Houston. Now, don't get me wrong, there's great people in Houston, and there's great believers of God. That's not what I'm saying. But when God looks down upon a government and looks down upon a religious system, uh, you've got to be careful. And I think judgments are really now starting to go city by city. You can look at the city— and you can tell, or the state, and you can tell, is this state ready for a judgment? You know, when I go into Houston, as much as I love Houston, the city, I feel this energy. And, I, and it's kind of a, Lynn, how do you say it? It's, it's kind of a, an uneasy energy, you know? And uh, there's some things going on politically in Houston that I just question, is this God's judgment upon Houston? Yeah, that certainly is interesting. And another note for those of you listening who may have missed it in other recordings I've recently done, Corpus Christi actually means body of Christ. Wow. And I'm looking online here at all the damage in Corpus Christi. And I kind of tend to think that God is also sending some sort of a warning to the body of Christ as well. I think things are just going to start happening all over the place, if you want my opinion at this point. 
No, they are. And they're happening a lot faster. And it's only because of God's remnant that's holding this thing together, Lynn. In other words, God's chosen, God's few, that's what's holding this whole thing together. Otherwise, it would just collapse and go straight into the pits of hell. And this is a chance for God's remnant to come out and say that one word that's that's rated R. What's that R word, Lynn, that we talk about so much that uh, nobody? Oh, talks. well, let me hold on, hold on. Rated we have R. A, wait, wait, don't don't say it. Can we have a like a ticking sound, like a timer? Uh, de- 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 I really de- know it. I'm just being de- being ridiculous. It, it, well, is that it? Ridiculous? No, it's repentance. No. Repentance. 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 Now's a good time for us to come out and say, you know what? It's time to repent. And you know, but you know, it blows my mind how man looks and goes, oh, this can't be God's judgment. As a matter of fact, they'll smash Christians down, true believers, for saying, don't you dare talk about God's judgment. I'm a good person. And then, and that's the time we as true believers has to stand up and say, you know what? There ain't nobody that's good. And except for God being in me, I would not be good. But you see, we back off as true believers and we get wimpy and we don't want to stand up to the, to the people that go, oh, this is not God's judgment. God loves everybody. This is the devil doing this. Well, you know what? You need to read the Bible and see what God has done to a lot of civilizations. You know, um, I, I think it's going city by city. OK, uh, there's like I said, there's things going on in Houston that are underground uh, that's political. OK, uh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and I think Atlanta is going to suffer some consequences. Why? Because they they asked me to to dress up as Abraham Lincoln on the National Day of Prayer last year and to speak from the courthouse and read the proclamation of eight. I think it was 1863. And I read it, and it was Abraham Lincoln crying out to the people, repent. The reason we have the Civil War is we're sinners. We have turned our back on God. Well, just before I went on to read the proclamation, Lynn, do you know what happened? The governor's office handed me a different proclamation they wanted me to read. And this proclamation wasn't about repenting. It was about we are a great city. We're going to be even greater. Nobody can come against us, blah, blah, blah. and I said to the person that handed it to me, I said, do you think I'm going to read this? And they kind of looked down. And I said, I'm not reading this. This is not this is this is not re- repenting. This is, you know, something else. So I didn't read it. And you know what? God was real. Now, let me tell you why I, I have a feeling about it. And I'll speak about Atlanta is the governor vetoed a bill that would prevent people, pastors from marrying gay couples. Okay, he vetoed that. And the reason he did, because AMC, as I understand, the Walking Dead, they said, we're going to pull out of Atlanta unless you yield to the things that we want. Well, guess what they wanted? They want equal rights for everybody. They want uh, they want gays to be able to be married. They want, you know, it's the same old stuff, you know. And so he yielded to that. And I think eventually there's going to be a judgment. There's going to be. Uh, a, a price to pay for that, Lynn. Well, just so many grotesque things are going on, such as um, recently uh, there's some show on, I don't have it in front of me, but there's a show that's going to be featured if it hasn't aired already. It may have, correct me if you know, David, but it shows Jesus Christ having sex with Mary Magdalene and it having sexual intercourse with her. And, you know, it's an AMC drama. That's what reminded me of it because you said AMC. Yeah. And it's just, it's disgusting. We have all this abortion. We have the homosexuality and not just the homosexuality. Let's look at fornication. Fornication means all sexual sin. It's not yeah. just right. people having sex out of wedlock. It's the pornography. Right. It's the lust. It's the uh, adultery, the perversions, all of it. So right. there's so much of that. This nation just reeks with disgust and sin and it's just corrupt and like i said i just think god is bringing his judgment upon this nation well he is amc another another company from hell just like disney just like netflix and you know that's why i'm making the last evangelist and and because we need programming that's going to tell god's truths you know and uh and it just it just makes it makes me ill. But if people don't turn away and they don't start repenting, 
there's going to be a lot more of what you're seeing in Houston happen all over the United States. And it could start happening all at once. And you know, if that happens, you know what, I mean, that's going to be very tragic. I'd be curious to find out what state AMC is in, like where their where their offices are located. It'd be interesting. Well, well, they're probably either in New York or Los Angeles. I may be speaking way out of my league, but most most of those guys are operating out of L.A. and out of uh, Los Angeles. And L.A. is going to have. I mean, I can't tell oh. you what. It, oh, they're what, in Kansas. It says I looked it up on Wikipedia. It oh, says well. they are located in Leewood, Kansas. Well. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how much you can trust Wikipedia. Maybe they are, but I guarantee you that they've got headquarters in either New York or Los Angeles. But, but the thing is, here's the point. The point is when a city, uh, when a location just keeps sinning against God, I'll give you an example. Do you know where most of the pornography in the world comes from? What's, where, what area? It comes from the Valley. It comes from uh, Southern California, from Simi, Va- uh, from uh, Chatsworth, I uh, all all in the valley there, and I got to tell you, when I go to these areas now, it's just getting worse and worse, and I can feel God's judgment coming upon them. There's going to be a great judgment judgment coming upon Los Angeles for what they're pumping out to the d- destroying the family. And so again, this is a time that we have to love people of what they're going through, but but within that love has to be, you know what? It's time to turn to God. Is it possible that God could be allowing this to happen? You know, don't you want to turn to God? Even the natives years ago, centuries ago, would look up to heaven and repent when there was a natural disaster. We as men, mankind, you know, we want to try to get into Joel Osteen's building, you know, and try to try to run for cover, you know. And uh, and by the way, What's that deal with Joel Osteen, by the way, that I was reading about? Do you have do you have the scoop on that? No, but I can pull it up on the computer. But funny you mentioned because I was just doing a recording with Pastor Benjamin Faircloth yesterday, which I have not uploaded yet, and he mentioned that something about Joel Osteen not opening their doors to the people that needed help, and he was talking about God's judgment because the churches, especially these mega churches, that aren't helping the people, they're turning people away. But um, right. I'm going to look that up right now, just out of curiosity. Yeah, well, that's what I heard, but in all fairness to him, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, bash uh, Joel Osteen if I don't know, know the 100% truth. Then I read after that, with the big old smile, that his building was flooded or something, and that's why he couldn't open the doors. I mean, that was after he got, he got slammed by not opening his door. So I don't know what the truth is on that, but here's the point. The point is we can help people and take care of their bodies only to a certain extent. But what about people's souls? You know, what about, it's funny, there's a story on the Titanic as it was sinking, uh, and this is a true story, there was a Baptist preacher that went around from, uh, swam, uh, he had a chance to get into the boat, but he didn't, a lifeboat, and people that ended up in the water that was drowning and freezing, he swam from person to person asking them if they would repent and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And uh, it, it, a lot of people, uh, according to the writings, did repent. And finally, he drowned. He was more concerned with a person's soul, you know, eternity, not the temporary body. Yes, we have to take care of that. But goodness gracious, 80, 90, 100 years at best, that's going to be gone. But what about eternity? We, we, we as true Christians, Lynn, we got to start understanding what's really going on. This church system, this religious system has just twisted everything to the point where we forgot about repentance. You know, we want to love everybody. We want to feed everybody. We want to do good for everybody, but then everybody just goes to hell. And that's not at all what Jesus came. He came to help people and teach people. But the first thing when he got baptized, he came, he he came in a ministry of what repentance for the kingdom of God is has come. Amen, and that's true. And I did look up the thing on Joel Osteen while you were talking, and basically it didn't appear that his church was damaged at all, and he had all this space that he could have helped people. It's a 16,800-seat arena at his Lakewood church near downtown Houston, 
and the doors were closed and he wasn't um, opening the doors for victims to give them shelter. But according to CNN, he's now opened the doors and yeah. so forth and saying that he couldn't because of flood damage. However, it was reported that there was no damage. So, you know, when we look at organizations like that, and I'm not a Joel Osteen fan, by the way, but right. um, we look at organizations like that that are making tons of money and then they don't want to help people. And again, I don't know his personal reasons. I can only tell what's on the news. But we need to pray for people like that. And the church in this nation is just so sour and corrupt. It's not even funny. Yeah, well, I can tell you if Oprah and uh, uh, Tyler Perry would have been banging on that door, he, he would have been quick to open it. That's for sure. Right, uh, exactly. No, I'm not, I'm not a fan, but I was trying to be not, you know, be fair to him. But, um, but here's the point. The point is uh, that we have to as Christians, start focusing and readjusting our thinking. Well, let me, let me even go one step further. We have to understand we have the mind of Christ. We don't readjust anything. We have to understand we start, we think like God. But what happens is we get into the world and we let these weak, evil people uh, come against us and we, and we start recruiting back into to what I call Christian stupidity, you know, to being wimpy. It's time now for us to stand up and be bold and go forth. And that's why, Lynn, we've been talking about this. We've been talking about the show that I'm doing, which you're a part of, The Last Evangelist. And I want you to be in it. And you are going to be in it, right? Yes, of okay. course. All right. Okay. All right. So, folks, you heard her. She committed to it. Um, we're doing this programming because it teaches people. It's, a, it's CSI meets Re the Book of Revelation, and it teaches people about what is going to happen, what is happening now. They're being educated, okay? And it shows a lead character who falls down and gets banged up, but he gets back up because he has the mind of Christ, and he goes forward, okay? A Marshall Matt Dillon, have, if you will. So we need to start having programming like this. We need to start turning off our Netflix. We need to start turning off AMC. We need to start turning off these the, the evil entities that are coming against God. I'm so tired of people slapping God in the face and letting Christians allowing it to happen. Amen, David. And it's true. A lot of Christians don't really stand up for the truth because they are afraid of confrontation or they just have enough sin in their life themselves that they feel like if they say anything, they're going to be a hypocrite or whatnot. I don't know. But right. not enough people are standing up. And it's it's kind of something that's embarrassing to know that I read an article that there were less homosexuals in this nation who were rallying for uh, gay rights, you know, the gay marriage rights before it got approved in all 50 states. There were less of them than there were people who proclaimed to be Christians. And they got out there and they did their thing and they screamed and yelled and they made a ruckus over what they wanted, and it took them a while, but they finally got their way. Now, if we took all the people who claim to be Christians in this nation and got them out there doing the same thing for what is right, right. I believe that mountains would be moved and we would see demons just fall from the sky on their face. So, Oh, absolutely. There's so many believers in Houston uh, and all over the United States, that if we as the true believers would just step up, all we need to do is step up to the plate. God will do the rest, but we just need to show up. And if we'll just show up, you'll see the power of God operate in people's lives, and you'll see things turn around, and you'll see the pits of hell just turn around and run back back into the, the cave, you know? But we're not doing that. And my concern is, Lynn, that but, well, let me tell you the story. I was at a party uh, the other night, uh, and there were a lot of Christians there. And one lady said to me, they were talking about uh, uh, do, uh, feeding people and, and going on the street and having ministry and stuff like that. And she got off onto this program that her church was doing, which was feeding the homeless. And she made this comment. She said, oh, yeah, I'd much rather feed the homeless than try to tell people about Jesus. And I was like, what? Did I just hear that? So what's happened, the Bible talks about this, is we're putting the needs of mankind, uh, the physical needs of mankind, above 
the spiritual needs, okay? And I think now we need more circuit riders. We need, back in the day, they had these circuit riders back in the 1800s that would ride on a horse from town to town, and they would preach repentance. That's, that's the, pretty much the only thing they would preach. And now we need circuit riders, Lynn. We need preachers to get out of the pulpit that aren't going to start telling the truth, and we need people to get in the pulpit that's willing to tell the truth and take the hits. That's exactly right. That is exactly what we need. But I have a feeling that God's judgment is really beginning, and I think there are going to be people who are going to repent and yes. turn to Christ, but I don't think the body of Christ itself in this nation as a whole is going to repent and I think that we're just at that point of no return where the judgment's going to come. I think we're in the end times. I think we're going to start seeing the things that the book of Revelation talks about. And yeah. that's just my personal opinion. You know, I haven't had a burning bush experience or anything like that. But that's my personal opinion with what I see going on and with what I feel in my spirit that is going to happen. And before we go on, I want to give out David's website. It is lastevangelist.com. I encourage you to go check him out and subscribe to his newsletter. And if you feel moved to help uh, donate to what he's trying to do, because he's doing this all uh, based on donations, because that's what God has told him to do. He told him to go to the Christians and do this the right way then I encourage you to do that. And you can find out how to do that on his website. I think you have a donate button, don't you, David? I do. And if they donate, they get certain things uh, from T-shirts to walk on part to, you know, so you get things if, if you want, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. So, so please check him out. Subscribe to his newsletter. Above all else, pray for him and for what he's doing. And also, if the Lord moves you to give to uh, the Lindley Oz ministry, um, most of you know, but for those of you who don't, I'll mention it again. Uh, YouTube has demonetized most all of my videos and they've done it to other Christian channels too. I'm not the only one. And so I need your support to continue doing what I'm doing. So if God moves you to, to give something, I have a PayPal. It is uh, Lynn Liaz at freedomnationnews.com, and that is L-Y-N-L-E-A-H-Z. The link will be below this video. It'll be uh, hyperlinked, so you can click on it. And if you don't do PayPal, um, I do have a P.O. box, and the address for that will be posted below this video as well as on the screen here. Um, it's Lynn Liaz Ministries. You can send a check or money order. And I don't mean to sound like I'm begging for money because I'm not trying to do that. Just if, if God moves you to give something to help my ministry out, that's awesome. If he just moves you to pray, please pray. I need the prayers. We all do during these times. So just a quick mention there and a reminder for all of you out there listening. Any help or support you can give David or myself is greatly greatly appreciated. So David, in the last uh, few minutes we have left here, um, what what is really, aside from what you've already said, of course, what else is on your heart about everything that's going on uh, prophetically and about the condition of this nation or just anything that might be on your heart, period? Yeah, thank you for asking that. What's on my heart are the children, okay, the youth. They're on my heart. OK, we have um, we've let them down, folks. Um, we have um, we've dis we've disconnected the wagon from the horse and uh, the wagon is going astray and the kids are going with it. OK, this is a serious situation. OK, forget about the, the, the judgment that's coming on. I mean, don't forget about it. But but what I'm trying to tell you is what good is judgment if people don't have a consciousness of God? OK, we need to get our youth back. OK, we need to pray for them, but not just pray for them. We need to do something. And that's why it's so important to, for, for entertainment to be readjusted. That's why I'm doing The Last Evangelist and I'm launching the new television network. God said, don't go to Netflix. Don't go to these people. Launch your own network and play the film on that and other programming we're going to do. And by the way, you're going to be on that network too, Lynn. Why? Because, listen, I'm just one guy. You're just one girl, okay? But we've got to start somewhere. 
And that's why you and I are here today, Lynn, because the preachers in the pulpit are failing. They're failing to tell the truth. The people inside the church buildings are failing. They, they realize that the truth is not being spoken. So what happens? People like us are born and we have to go on the internet and start talking this way, right? So, so here's what I'm saying, folks. Step up to the plate. Let's take care of our kids. Get them away from the television. Get them away from that programming. I want to make programming, and Lynn wants to make programming that's going to be good for kids, going to nurture them, okay? And that's why I thank you so much, Lynn, for letting me come on and, and be your friend and to talk and, and, and you know, be with you. Uh, to tell the people about what I'm doing. It's it's so important about this TV series to, to help me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for that. And it's important to me too, to keep putting out the truth. In fact, just this last week, I've been doing one to two interviews a day, trying to get the truth out. And I receive so much hatred and criticism from yeah. so many people, not just the world, but astonishingly, from people claiming to be Christian because I'm putting out the truth, but that's okay. I get people who write to me and they feel bad for me. Don't yep. feel bad for me. And I'll tell you why. A long time ago, when I first started doing this, well, actually not that long ago, back in 2014, I used to get my feelings hurt. And then the Lord revealed to me, you know, you're being persecuted for the truth. Right. You know, you're being persecuted for me. That's what he spoke right. to me. And right. so now I take it as a, as a confirmation that I'm making the devil mad. Right. And that's why I'm getting attacked. So now if I don't get attacked by the trolls or the Pharisees and Sadducees, right. then I get worried. So don't feel sorry for me. I am used to it. My skin is thick with that. And uh, once in a while, people will write to me and say something. And once in a blue moon, it'll hurt my feelings, but not too much. I don't, I don't let it. But um, just to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the full armor of God is what I would say to people, because we are in for some major things. And, hey. and I just encourage all of you to get close to God and get your hearts right and repent. Well, David, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, you can visit David at lastevangelist.com. That link will also be posted below my video again. If God moves you to help him with a gift, please feel free to do that. And you can do that from his website. And also, if you're not subscribed to me here on YouTube, please subscribe to me today for all the latest updates. And that is youtube.com slash Lynn, L-Y-N-L-E-A-H-Z. Visit my website, freedomnationnews.com. And if God moves you to support my ministry, um, you can find the information right below this video um, and, and you can just do whatever God moves you to do. So thank you so much to everybody out there and God bless all of you. And David, thank you again. I love having you on my show and uh, taking time out to, to talk with you and share this with the listeners. You're welcome, Lynn. It's so good being with you and your listeners. I always feel like I'm right at home, you know, and, and God bless you. And thank you so much. You know, uh, uh, someone said the last evangelist was like uh, gun smoke. Uh, well, I like to think I'm Marshall Matt Dillon, you know, which I would never be that. But maybe you're Miss Kitty. You know, Miss Kitty, she always was strong, you know, she always was strong. So it doesn't matter how many people come against you. That's fine. Be strong in the Lord. You, you listeners out there, people are going to put you down because you stand up for God. Be strong in the Lord. It's his power that makes us stand up. So anyway, thank you so much, Lynn. I love you guys, and God bless you all, and stay safe out there. Well, thank you, and God bless you, David. You take care.